Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In the spline tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a glowing neon sign just like this. If you'd like to remix this exact spline scene, I'm going to leave a link in the description so you can just go ahead and remix it and play with it on your own. So let's just jump into spline and show you how I set everything up. And here we are inside of spline and instead of recreating the wheel, I'm going to show you how I have this scene set up. So as you can see right here, I have this big uh, backdrop right here and then there's three directional lights right here. And if you look, this uh, directional light is in the back and it's got a color of white. This one on the right kind of has like a pink color. So when you move the camera this way, it's going to have that pink color. And then this directional light has that blue. So that's just kind of how I have the scene set up. So I don't have to walk through all of those exact steps. So what I wanted to do is we had this uh, brand that we created called Sweet Dreams. And I wanted to have it where we can have the ice cream. So if I zoom in right here, I wanted to have this as like a neon uh, effect, like on a website. So what I wanted to do was directly import this as one big SVG and then try to do the neon effect that way. But after some trial and error, what I had to end up doing was kind of separate everything out. So let me show you how I have everything uh, separated out. So I have the words right here. If you look, I have all of the words as its own separate um, layer with a whole bunch of different shapes in them. So all that is is just a direct import of that SVG. So if I go back into Illustrator, I just exported this as an SVG and then I did an import into Spline. Now the main point of this tutorial is this right here. So I want to show you how I was able to create this from scratch. And the reason why I had to create this inside of Spline is because when I imported this, I needed to make sure that each one of these areas is kind of like its own path. So I couldn't really find a great way using this shape. So what I did instead was I went back into my Illustrator file and I exported this right here as just like a JPEG or a PNG. And then I'm going to import that into Spline and then show you how I was able to trace over it and how you add the neon effect. So I'm just going to click on the import button. I'm going to import a JPEG of just the ice cream. And as you can see, this is what it looks like when I import it in. So let me show you how I was able to trace this out. And then you how the main point is how to add that texture and then the uh, bloom effect to make it kind of glow. So what I like to do is go into front view right here and I'm going to zoom in. The resolution of your import doesn't really matter too much. As long as you can see the lines and kind of get a rough idea, you'll be good to go. So what I do is I click the plus button right up here and I went to path and let's start with the base. So I made the base down here separate and then the top part is uh, separate from that. So I needed to make sure that I start from here. You just kind of go here, here. I'm just clicking on the, uh, the different corners and then connect it. So of course that's not how you want it to look. So you just need to make a few adjustments over here. What I recommend is changing the subdivision right here on the right to something a little bit higher. Let's just go with 30 for now. And the main reason why this looks so big is because the size is ridiculous. It's at 50. We need to bring that to like six. So once you do that, you can see it's already taking a good shape of how you want the neon sign to look. Then what you could do is just go up here and just make sure you move these points to a better spot. And then this tool right here, if you click on each one of these, it's going to add these little anchor points. So what I recommend is going to each one of these, making sure that you have the anchor points and the, these little pivots right here on each one of them. Now you can really fine tune like how you want this to look. You can also like click and drag that. So if you want to have it to be a little more rounded, that's how you're going to have to do it. You're going to have to make sure you go in here and kind of move these, uh, points around so it kind of takes the shape. Now in this situation what I realized is I wasn't able to import it the correct way with my SVG because it just wasn't taking the shapes correctly. So if you look right here where my mouse is there's just a handful of shapes. So I just need to make one shape here, another one like right here, here, down here, and that one too. So it's a very similar situation. So what you're going to want to do is exit out of that one once you're done editing. Click path again. And same thing, let's just go ahead and just click here and then you want it to end like right there. So I recommend keeping everything exactly the same. So you can just go ahead and do six across the board like that. And just like the other one, you want to click and drag these things around 
And then in this case, you're going to want to pull that one really far out like that. And that's it. And then down here, I recommend you keep this one right here where it says caps. Make that go to round. And then what you can do is at the end, we can move these things around and make sure they get intersected correctly. So now we can jump over into the next shape. Click path. And in this situation, we're going to go from here to right here. Same thing. Let's just go up here. Change this to 30. 6. And move these points. So move this up here. Give it a really big bend like that. Move this one down. You can move that one up. And then make sure you give the caps a nice round cap. So now I'm going to do the rest of them. And then I'm going to show you the texture that we need and how you can get that glow effect. So here's the end product right here. And if you start to move the camera, uh, you may need to make some adjustments to make sure that some of these are overlaying on top of each other correctly. And in some situations, like on this arch right here, I didn't need to key, uh, put the caps on, but you could see with an arch like this, if I, if you look right here where the mouse is, let me zoom in. If you aren't familiar with how these caps work, if you don't have that on, it's going to be flat. So in most cases, if you're doing like a neon sign in this situation, you're going to want to have the caps on. So these ones, I believe, do not have the caps. And then I put the caps on these two right here. And that's it. So that's your outline right there. So now what we can do is assign a material to this. And let me show you how I have the, this material, and then you could just duplicate this. And inside of the materials, all I have is a color layer, lighting layer, and a color. And the very first one I just have is this darker pink color. So that's it with some opacity. And then what I did down here is just change the opacity to something like 63. You know, it depends on your use case, of course, but I kind of like to have two different colors blending in because it, it kind of makes it look like it has some depth or some glass to it without having like a glass material. Then we have the lighting and here are the settings I have inside of here. Underneath the shininess, this is going to really play into how shiny this material is going to look. So at the end, when we enable the bloom effect, this will really start to pop. And then down here, I have just the, a lighter color right here of the same kind of pink. We just have it a little bit lighter. So as you can see right here, this is the base right down here. And it's a very similar effect I have right here. I have two different yellows and the lighting right here. So if you want to make sure that the shininess is at the same level, that's a good idea. So if you want it to make it look more consistent, you could just copy your top texture up here, just change out the colors. That's what I did down here. Maybe change a few values right here. And then down here inside the ice cream words, uh, what I did is I added a gradient contrast. I believe this was one that was already inside spline. So if you look underneath depth right here, all I'm doing is just changing the colors right here. So if you want to have totally different colors, you could just slide that around right here. But these are the settings I have right here. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Now the next step is what really makes everything just pop. And that's called the bloom effect. And let me show you how easy it is to activate that. In order to get there, you just need to make sure you exit out of everything right here. So you can always just click right here in empty space, or sometimes I hit escape. And then this is kind of like your global uh, settings right here on the right side. Then what you need to do is just go underneath bloom and you can click the eyeball on. And depending on how your defaults are set up, uh, this is how I have it set up right here. We have large intensity, you got your blur scale, you got your threshold. So these are the settings I found that work pretty good with this. So of course, this is always going to change depending on how you have your scene set up. So if I just zoom out right here, you can see if I change the intensity, it's going to really, you know, make those colors pop a lot. And then you could change the different blur. So if you want maybe a little less blurry, they give you a lot of cool settings right here. And you can see right here, threshold, you probably don't want to keep that around here. Let me see. That looks pretty good. The blurriness kind of make it pop right there and the smoothing i don't really play with the smoothing too much because you can see at the top it kind of kills the effect pretty quick so i usually keep that pretty low so the thing about bloom is any object inside your scene is going to get like this blown out effect so let me show you what that looks like if you just import that image that i trace the ice cream on let me show you how that looks now and as you can see, when I import that, it has that bloom effect on, like I said, every object inside the scene. 
So if you go into the bloom settings and you turn it off, that's what it should look like. And then that's what it looks like, you know, when you have bloom on. So if you are doing this effect and you have to use bloom, just keep that into consideration that you can't exclude uh, objects. As of recording this, you cannot exclude objects from getting that bloom effect. I do hope that in the future they're going to give you the op option to exclude because that would be very helpful. But let's go ahead and just delete that. And then, like I said, you could just activate this bloom whenever you're done. Um, I do recommend only add the bloom once you're finally done with your scene because you don't really want to be tracing with this stuff on because it can get really hard to you know see what you're tracing and work on the material. So save that for last and you should be good to go. And that's it for the spline tutorial on how to create this neon glow effect inside spline. Make sure you give this video a like, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.